I would like to welcome everybody and thank you for your uh, presence. And I would like to stress that for me, it's a big privilege to talk with you tonight, to evening. And I hope it will be not a boring. I hope you will join it. I don't know what uh, Fisher told, said about myself, but I heard that um, he said something about my company, about my history, about my activity, professional activity. That's what I catch. We did it. <laughs> I don't know if it's correct or not. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the careful listening, uh, even if you don't know language, in mentoring is something the most important. Because mentoring is not only a matter of language. The, the language is, of course, part of communication, but only part. So I just would like to admit that um, mentoring is uh, the art of connection from your oh, different yeah. sources, from your life experience, passion, and love to people. That I yeah. 必须承认，就是导师辅导呢，它是也是一种连接的艺术，它是它连接到了我们不同的资源以及我们不同的人生经验。And I hope you will see uh, in today our meeting that I can use some of my resources uh, to make this presentation because, as probably Fisher didn't say that, my background I am the historian. I finished Warsaw University Department of History. Also, I am a sociologist. Um, I used to be a businessman, and I'm a coach, and I'm a mentor, and I'm a father of two daughters. So, in my today's lecture, I will also bring my personal experience and different resources. I am not only a historian, but I have a background in history, such as I studied in the Warsaw University of History. 就是历史专业也有，就是在里面也有研究。然后我是一名教练，也是一名导师，同时也是两个女儿的父亲。So, uh, because of that, I will use,、uh, I will invite you for the journey today. That I will use my passion to history, connecting with the passion to mentoring, and ending with passion to research. 那今天呢，我会。首先呢，邀请大家跟我一同，就是通向历史。因为首先呢，我会会能够向大家展现我对历史的热爱。然后今天讲座的最后呢，也会向大家展现我在对历史方面的研究。嗯、um, ，The presentation will take something about forty forty five minutes. It depends how fast I say will translate it. 然后。今天的话，就是我个人的话是大概讲四十五分钟，但是时间时长呢，也可能会，比如说涉及到其他翻译的因素在里面。And then we will have、uh, time for、uh, our conversation for Q&A. I will stay till will till end something about two o'clock, if it will be needed. 那最后呢，我们会留一些时间来问答。All right. Let's start then. Let's start from the map of the Imperium Romanum from the second century after Christ. This Imperium Romanum. Why I'm showing you? There are two reasons. The one, the mentoring was born in ancient world, in ancient Rome. Emperor, this is the place and time when the mentoring was born. This is the reason number one. 这张地图呢是古罗马地图，是古罗马在大概在二世纪的时候。然后我之所以向大家展示这张图呢，主要有两个原因。首先，第一个原因呢就是导师辅导，它也可以追溯至古罗马时期，因为在那个时候呢，就是。无论从地点、时间上面来说呢，可以说这里也是导师辅导的诞生地。The reason number two 
is that within in the emperor, there are two very important cities. One, Rome, and the second, Nazareth, which got absolutely crucial important in mentoring for nowadays. 然后在第二个原因呢，是因为在这两张图里面有两个城市，然后这两个城市呢，对导师辅导呢是起到至关重、至关重要的作用的。The Rome, I just want, uh, because it used to be a capital city of the not only the largest emperor worldwide those time, but also after that was the capital of the Christianity. And Nazareth was the place when the Jesus Christ was born. And because of the Jesus Christ, we count the new era from this time. And Christianity got amazing influence of developing not only the values within the worldwide and Europe, but also for influence on developing free art. And that will be case that I would like to invite you to follow me. 那其中呢，罗马罗马它不仅是当时最大的罗马古罗马罗马帝国的首都，同时它也是就是基督教的发源地，也是耶稣基督的诞生地。那我们基督教呢，它就是在全球世界范围内，全世界人民的那个价值观
基督教它发展的一个重要的地方。然后当时就是后来教皇也在这里建立了自己的首都。In the 14th century, 13th-14th century, it the the Catholic Church in Europe was at the top of his pro prosperity. It was the richest organization amongst the Europe. And most influential for all、um, citizens and also kingdoms within the Europe. 呃，大约在十三、十三、十四世纪，当时天主教在欧洲它具有就是绝对的影响力。然后不仅是最，是最影响力最大的，同时也是最富裕的一个组织。The picture of this prosperity. And today we can also look at this. It's Vatican, the city, the the heart of the Pope city in Rome. This is city in city, actually. This is country in the country nowadays. But those times was the most prestigious place for all、um, nobles and artists who were really driving to Vatican because the Vatican. Invite the most famous artists and architects and builders to recreate their own capital. 然后这幅图呢，呃，是里面是梵蒂梵蒂冈，然后梵蒂冈呢也是教皇的所在地。然后它这个梵蒂冈，它不仅是城中之城，它也是国中之国。还有这个地方，它之所以之前。非常的有名呢，他也是就是很多贵族艺术家一直向往的地方。因为当时梵蒂冈也邀请了很多的画家、很多的建筑师来帮助帮忙建设梵蒂冈。The absolutely pearl of Vatican prosperity and the picture of、uh, wealthy, it's the Sistine Chapel. 然后这张图呢是西斯廷教堂。The Sistine Chapel is a chapel in the Apostolic Palace in Vatican City, and the official residence of the Pope, originally known as a Cappella Magna. The chapel takes its name from Pope Sixtus IV, who had built it between 1473 and 1481. Then this. 就西斯廷教堂呢，它是应该是教皇的，就是官方所在地。同时，它也是，它是建于是一四七，是一三一四七三年开建，然后于一四八一年建成的。Since that time, the chapel has served as a place of both religious and functionary papal activity. Today, even nowadays, this is the site. Of the papal conclave, the process by which a new pope is selected, up till today. 然后这个西斯廷教堂呢，它是主要举行教皇宗教活动的地方。然后现在呢，它也是选举新任教皇的地方。But this place is famous not only because the pope is selected here, but mainly. Because of absolutely amazing art, which is which we can observe nowadays, the, these paintings were complete between 1482 and 1483, and after also between 1508 and 1512 by three popes. And here we can see the most famous. Artists or Renaissance time in Rome. 然后这个就是它的西斯廷这个教堂呢，它不仅是选举新任教皇的地方，同时它在这里也展现了很多精美著名的艺术作品。然后这些艺术作品呢，大概是在有几个时期，有一四八二年到一四八三年，还有一一五零八年到一八零二年所住的。然后在这里你能看见到。文艺复兴时期，很多著名的画家他们的作品。So we have here the art of Sandro Botticelli, Pietro Perugia, Pinturicchio, Domenico Ghirlandaio, Cosimo Rosselli, and of course 
Rafael Santi and Michelangelo. 好，这里呢，你们能看到，比如说米开朗基罗，比如说佩鲁吉诺，还有比如说拉斐尔的作品。and how how can happen and why i'm all this saying to you today why i invite you for this journey to to past history because there is the amazing story behind us 那我之所以给大家介绍这样的一段历史呢是因为在这段历史里面呢有一个非常精彩的故事 and this is amazing story we can Observe the ceiling painted by Michelangelo. 大家可以看到这里是米开朗基罗画的壁顶画. Painted in the beginning of 16th century, after the walls of chapel has been finished and already painted. 然后这个主要是在六世纪初的时候他画的。but we can look also the next apostolic palace, amazing fresco by Rafael Santi. And in the end, fresco made by Perugino, which were the first one in the Sistine Chapel. 出自佩鲁吉诺之手，而这幅壁画呢，也是这个西斯廷教堂的它的第一幅壁画。Today, when we look at Perugino fresco, we don't found them as a something amazing like Raphael Santi's art or Michelangelo. 哦，在今天呢，我们就是看佩鲁吉诺的作品的时候，那么我们会认为。they looks quite normal, I would say, not extraordinary, not excited. However, without Perugino, probably we won't have Rafael Santi. And this relationship, it's about mentoring, Trust, confidence, and supporting. 但是呢，没有佩鲁吉诺的话，可以说也没有拉斐尔。然后这也是他们俩之间的关系呢，也是一段就是很好的导师辅导关系范例。它里面包含了信任、自信和支持。It's difficult to imagine that Rafael Santi has been committed for his job. In the age of 25 years old. 然后其实比较难以置信的是拉斐尔画这幅作品的时候,他才25岁. Because the scope of job that Pope ordered to him was absolutely amazing for those times. He was working parallelly with Michelangelo. And the same time, and the different places with the lie each other 100 meters. 然后当时呢，他是受到教皇的任命来接下这份壁画的工作的。然后当时他跟米开朗基罗是在不同的地方，然后同一时间做壁画的。Pietro Perugino actually was not born in Perugia, but his he was born in a small city called Città della Pieve, located near Perugia, and he was born around 1450. And he was the master of his times. The first mm -hmm. Before him, in 14th century Italy, the workshop presided over by a master and subject to the regulation of the guild was the only institution where a young layman could acquire a training as a mural or panel painter. Shi 
And in this period, the intellectual and social status of a painter was that of a manual craftsman. And his education consisted primarily in the acquisition of certain skills learned through practical experience. 教育体系之下，然后他得以呢，就是接受了很多的训练。And Perugino changed it. 然后当时的社会情况，关于这个教育体系其实是也是有一定问题，然后但是他改变了这种情况。He changed traditional workshop when you use your own. Uh, practicants and pupils for repeating work and learn something that you have only repeat, he transformed his workshop to the place when he developed new artists. Then,在当时的传统的那个绘画流派里面,他改变了当时的学徒,然后是像老师,其实 一味的模仿学习这种方式，然后他呢，就是改变了这种方式，创建了新的流派，然后在这里呢，也培养了很多艺术家。And Perugino developed the traditional Italian workshop into highly organized artistic enterprise for the large-scale production of individually commissioned paintings. And indeed, Perugino was the leading master painter of his days. He was the most famous painter those times in Italy. Well,在是佩鲁吉诺的他的努力下，然后当时他们形成的流派呢，是具备高度组织性和艺术性的。然后在当时也就是产出了大量的绘画作品。然后他是他那个时期非常著名领先的。and he was he was of course teaching the people, but he was looking not for supporting of his own mastery, but he was looking for special kind of people with a talent who can will develop. 然后他当时的也不只是说，只是教学生，然后他同时在寻找人才的时候呢，也是找那些，比如说改变变化意愿比较强的一些人才。So Pietro created many master of that style, which was so pleasing to his age that many pupils came from France, Spain, Germany, and of course from Italy. 然后当有当时呢，有很多。就是他的学生来自法国、德国、意大利，然后都慕名而来向他学习。One of them was very young, Rafael Sanchi, born in Urbino in the end of the 15th century, in 83. We don't know exactly what kind of relationship were between Perugino and his pupil. But this, what we know, allow us to set some hypotheses. Then,其中一名学员呢，就是年轻的拉斐尔。拉斐尔是在一四八三年的时候出生在乌尔比诺。好，我们其实对于就是呃佩鲁吉诺跟学学生之间的关系呢，其实并不是很明确。但是我们知
，然后这个佩鲁吉诺呢，他一直就是被他的呃学员的奉为当时同时期非常就是顶尖的大师。然后他之所以被奉为大师，不仅仅是因为他优秀的就是绘画作品，同时也是因为他卓越的商业能力。他能，他是在商业方面也是取得了很大的成功。然后年轻人呢，不仅是想向他学习。比如说绘画技巧，同时呢，也希望提升一下其他方面的技能，比如说能让更多的贵族看到。One of outstanding, uh, of outstanding, uh, sites of Perugino workshop was discovering, uncovering the unique talents of his pupils, while the most others were asking his. Pupils for repeating their own job, they teach them techniques. Perugino, as a mentor, ask his pupils to recreate and make the subjects better than he is doing, or in a different way. And here we have a sample: the same subject. The first painting is on the left side, made by Perugino, and on the right side, the same subject is made by Raphael. 呃，在就是佩鲁佩鲁吉诺他的就是流派之下呢，他们会比较注重发掘就是人才独特的地方。当其他人他们问，会比较偏向于就是让他们的学生来重复他们的绘画作品。然后佩鲁吉诺呢，他作为一名导师，他会指导他的学生来对他的作品进行再创作。其实同样的，比如说同样的一个主题，让学生呢以不同的方式，或者说以更好的方式，然后再重新创作。这个这张图上呢，就是很好的例子，圣母的婚礼。左边呢就是导师佩鲁吉诺的作品，然后右边就是学员拉斐尔的作品。Of course, which one you like the most is the matter of the taste. However, The hist the the most professionals find the painting of Raphael much more advanced, changed, and modern than the painting of his mentor. 然后很多专业人士呢就认为拉斐尔他的作品要比他的导师的作品呢就更高级更现代化。Raphael crossed the standards. He is visibly seen his already absolutely unique point of view for the human nature, human emotions, and perspective. 然后拉斐尔呢，他就是让比较突出的地方呢，绘绘画中比较突出的地方是，他会比较善于运从。运用那个透视空间，同时能够体现出人性的一面。And Perugino wasn't jealous. He was happy. 然后佩鲁吉诺呢，他是为此呢是感到非常的高兴。He started to promote、uh, Raffaello, and he ordered to him a special fresk for the first time in small church in Perugia. 然后呢，佩鲁吉诺他呢是不断的就是鼓励拉斐尔，然后这个作品呢是拉斐尔在佩鲁贾做的壁画。But already young Raphael became a famous, and many people ask him to and try to ordering his job for himself, and due to that he was invited to Florence to meet. Absolutely, Master Leonardo da Vinci. So he resigned. He stopped painting this fresco and moved to Florence for the next training and new experience next to Leonardo da Vinci. And what did Perug Perugino? Perugino. Make this fresk complete and paint the bottom. He supports his pupil, 
And you can imagine, thanks of that, he invested in him. He was humble. He knew those times that the Raphael is simply better. However, he was not a jealous, he was still promote him. And that's why, therefore, young Raphael, 25 years old guy, was invited by Pope Julius II to paint the Apostolic Palace. While at the same time, Michelangelo were painting the Sistine Chapel. Lafayette,问他就是,他可以就是完全自己就是独立,然后创作,然后当时呢是有一个机会可以去到佛罗伦萨,向他们去学习,然后他当时呢,然后就暂停了这个壁画,然后他前往了就是佛罗伦萨,
，我喜欢什么，又不喜欢什么，然后这里面的原因又是什么？ Let's present some basic results of the research made by Tasha Ori. She. 让我们看一下，就是塔莎·欧里希她的一些研究成果。She is really keen to develop to understand what is the difference between people who are self-aware and not self-aware in the context of employment and results what they achieve during the work. 然后，欧里希呢，他是就主要是专注就是研究有意识的人跟就是在职场里有意识的员工跟缺乏自我意识的员工之间的区别。The results is evidence, but the funny thing is, the most people think in the world that they are self-aware. Almost ninety-five percent they think about themselves. Yes. I am self-aware. 然后研究结果呢，其实是显而易见的。但比较有趣的是，百分之九十五的人他们认为自己有自我意识，但实际只有百分之十到百分之十五的人他们是实际真正具备自我意识的。But according to checking and her research, and also not only her research, but also others who are working on emotional intelligence, the results are clear. Only ten, fifteen percent of the population of employees are really self-aware. 然后结合他的研究以及其他众多的研究成果呢，就表明，在员工当中呢，有百分之十，就到百分之十到百分之十五的是真正有自我意识的。And this research is related to Europe and United States. This result. 然后这个研究呢，它主要是发生在就是欧美国家的。And why it's so important? Why it's so important? And what is the impact of being self-aware for quality of life and quality of work? 哦，为什么自我意识如此重要呢？它就是为什么就是是如何影响到我们的工作跟生活的呢？ First of all, if you are self-aware, you are more proactive. You are actively, actively looking and searching for the new opportunities, and you can easily connect the things from the different realities. 然后有当你有自我意识的时候呢，首先它能够让你更加的积极主动，你会积极的去寻找很多新的机遇。The second, if you are self-aware, the self-awareness encourages you to positive self-development. It means that you know why you are developing and what you need to develop to become a better. 然后第二个呢，当你有自我意识的时候呢，它能够鼓励你积极的进行自我发展。所以在这种情况下，就是你知道，就是你。需要就是怎样的发展，然后发展呢？通过这这些要得到这样的发展，然后你又需要具备哪些能力 ？You precisely choose what trainings you need, why and for what. You are not losing the time and you are not wasting the energy. 然后呢，你是能够非常的清醒的知道是如何选择。然后选择自己可能需要接受哪些培训，然后是为什么，而自己如何去去积极的接受跟进，这样的话你也不会浪费时间跟精力。And self awareness make you more resistant for change, and you accept easily the changes. Your acceptance is wider. 然后具备自我意识呢，也能够让你更加就是能够。从容的去接受变化，然后能够提升你的就是对任何事情的一个接纳度。Also, what is the most important? It helps the self-awareness because it helps you to see the different perspective 
not only that you create within yourself, but also to see the different perspective of others. And because you see the different perspective, you know the tools to evaluate them, it gives you ability to work more effectively. Simply, it gives you self-control of what you are doing, why you are doing, and when you are doing. You can prioritize your task in the most efficient way and easy way. Because self-awareness is not only about what are you willing to do, but also what are you not willing to do. So it gives you self-control, simply saying. In results of that, in effect, you are much better at your job because you are doing what you choose to do, what you like to do, and you are saying in your own truth. 具备做意识呢，你可以在工作中表现更好，因为你做的事情呢是你自己选择、自己喜欢做的。If you are doing what you like, like Raphael, if you know why you're doing, right, Raphael, you are much better than others because you are working with a passion, and people are willing to pay more. For your truth and your passion, because always when you do something with the passion, you are better than others. So, in this moment, when you do something, you are very clear about what you are doing. And you are always able to perform better than others. Because you are always in this process, and the customer is often more inclined to use the people who are more passionate people. Because in this way, they are more passionate people. And of course, it's it's a magic circle. It's enhance your self confidence. If the people admire your job, if you are better at your job, the people like your job, they admire your job. Your self confidence is growing. So, when you are able to do what you want to do, then you can slowly increase your self confidence. 因为你当时你表现的很好的时候呢，别人他会比较的欣赏你，然后比较甚至比较的更崇拜你，然后在这个过程当中，你的信心也是一步一步提升上去的。And people who are really self-confident and self-conscious, they are humble and they communicate better in the workplace, which means not only talking to others like I'm doing now, but listen to the others. Which is the most important? Observing, listen to the others. This is about communication. Communication is about Italian word communio, togetherness. 当一个人他有自信，然后有自我意识的时候呢，他表现的也很谦虚，然后他的沟通能力呢也会有到得到提升。这个沟通呢，不只是说，就是你与别人就是语言上的沟通谈话。然后也包括倾听，因为倾听这一点也是在沟通中是非常重要的，因为你在这个过程当中要去能够就很好的去观察对方，然后很好的就是跟对方就是有所交流。So if you are better at your job, in health and confidence, you communicate a better workplace, and you are succeed. This is the natural scope of the leadership. 
and the mastering of your leadership. People would like to be together with you and follow you because as Perugino was in Perugia, extremely successful because he was doing what he liked to do. And he was able to look and see in others talents that he doesn't get because he was the self-confidence. 当你就是在工作中能够表现更好的时候，以及沟通也有能够更好的时候，这个时候你就很容易取得成功。然后这也是领导力所必须具备的要素，因为这样的话，别人会更愿意跟你在一起工作，然后更愿意追随你。就像佩，就像那个佩鲁吉诺，他在做他喜欢做的事情，然后他同时也能看到其他人的才能，然后他。他呢，就是对自己表现的非常自信。And if you are self-aware, you make a better decision, and the better decision, yeah, the makes success, and the better decision and success, it means leadership. And if you look how the trust in himself were built by Perugino and Raphael, how he promote him. That such a young guy at age 22 is traveling himself to Florence to meet Leonardo da Vinci, absolutely star number one those times. You have to be very self-confident to make this decision, and thanks to this decision, he developed again and again. And finally, he was invited to painting the most prestigious place worldwide those time in Rome. 然后，当你就是有具备自我意的时候呢，你能够更好的决策，然后能取得成功。这呢也是领导力。当我们就回顾一下，比如说佩鲁吉诺跟拉斐尔之间他们的关系，他们之间就是有很强的信任关系。然后佩鲁吉诺呢，他也很愿意支持去鼓励那个拉斐尔。拉斐尔当时也是才二十二岁的年纪，然后就去到佛罗伦萨去见达芬奇。然后佩鲁吉诺呢，他就是有非常的自信的，能做出做出这样的决策。然后也是也是，他是帮助也是帮助，就是拉斐尔他能够提升了他的自信，做出这样的决策。然后同时呢，也一步一步的提升了绘画能力，然后成为了他同时期最优秀的大师。And now, what we get out of unaware employees? Let's look in the opposite side now, according to the research. 然后现在让我们看一下，就是另一面，没有他自我意识的员工，他们又是怎样的 ？The research observe very several consistent behaviors of unself-aware individuals, like. They want to listen to others, especially if others they have different point of view. They cannot accept this, and they are not willing and open for having critical feedback. 缺乏自我意识的人呢，他们往往会表现一出一些共性，就是一会表现一出相同的行为。好，比如说第一个，他们不太会愿意。就是听取听取别人的批评性的反馈，他们不太愿意听取那个与他们不同的观点。And actually, this what develops us is our experience, our failures, and the feedback. The our failures are the feedback, but the failures can develop us only when we ask the proper questions. For ourselves. 其实，但在做导师辅导过程当中呢，其实反馈呢是非常重要的，因为只我们常常都是说，我们就是问学员问题，然后给予他反馈，然后这样呢才能会更好的帮助他。Also, what they observe, they cannot empathize with. They have no empathy, or 
Also, they cannot take perspective of others. They don't understand the different perspective with except of their own. 然后他们呢，这些人往往呢没有同理心，他们没有办法与他人产生共鸣，也没有办法从他人的角度来看待问题。So in effect, they have difficulty reading a room. I mean, understand other people simply saying and tailoring their message to the audience. So very often, they make mistake with communication. They saying think that they are really difficult to hear to the audience, or they are painful. Oh,他们呢也很难够，很难，就是察觉到周遭的气氛，然后就是简单的来说呢，就是别人说什么的时候呢，他们可能会就是不太能够精准的掌握其中的信息，然后呢也很难根据就是别人的需要来调整他说话
我们作为导师的使命就是能够提供良好的建设性的反馈。But how to do it? First of all, the mentee should ask us, and he should be the motivating. For that, he must trust us, like Rafael Santi trusted Perugino because he saw his professional performance and credibility with relationships with other people. So the trust is something absolutely fundamental. How to do it? Ah, the first step is that when you want to give a student the motivation, the first step is to give him the confidence and trust. Like Rafael Santi trusts Pellegrino, he can trust him. You can show your professional performance and your credibility. And the second condition is to give him the confidence and trust. That we must fundamentally believe in somebody else, somebody else's skills, and the opposite dementee should believe in us that we are not gonna use him, that we are working on him, with him, and for him, not for us. Then the third one is. 就是我们要能够让学员相信，我们不是在利用他，我们是和他在一起，我们做这件事情是为了他的利益着想的。So the mentoring is built on trust and confidence for both sides. That is the way. Is so efficient. If you know how to act as a mentor. This journey. Starts from yourself as a mentor to be sure about your weaknesses, your strengths, and your professional evidence as a master. And this is the field that you can work as a mentor based on trust and confidence. 导师辅导呢，它一定是建立在信任跟信心的基础上的。你作为导师呢，一定要就是知道这一点，然后这样呢也会让你的这个导师辅导过程非常高效。那在首先作为导师，你自己呢一定要了解自己的优势、你的劣势，包括你自己的专业在哪里。And the last but not least, the mentoring is not about the teaching. Because the most teacher wastes the time asking questions, desire to show up what the student doesn't know. A master use the questions to reveal what the student does know, or is capable of learning. Then, teacher 辅导呢，它是一是一定不是关于就是跟教学相关的，因为大多数老师呢，他。把时间都浪费在了提问学生可能不知道的问题上，而真正的大师呢，他则是会利用问题来揭示学生他自己其实已经知道的或者他能够学到的东西。So that's why I call the mentoring art of the public service that we serve others for the journey to themselves, thanks of which they can be creative, vulnerable. And unique. 然后我呢，就是把导师辅导呢，它看成一种就是一门就是公共服务的艺术。然后我们作为导师呢，是能够就是帮助学生，他能够具备创造力，能够自在的去展现出他的脆弱，然后就是展现出他独一无二的一面。Thank you very much. I'm willing to answer the question if they are. Please feel free to ask. Uh, I've noticed the Chester uh, told us most teachers waste time asking questions designed to show up what the student doesn't know. Let me, we should not do that as a mentor. Yeah, we should try to use questions 
to reveal what a student doesn't know or he is capable to do or to learn. And that means we have to help the student to find uh, the, to, to, to find a way to solve the problem internally from his own or her own internal resources. But, but uh, should we also try to help them to find some outer resources, outer in, uh, not only internal resources. For example, sometimes we have to remind them to use the resources from outside world, from his relatives, friends, or from a relationship. Yeah, so this is also the ways we should do. What well, is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely okay. yes. Because the mentoring is also about special way of sharing experience and getting experience from world which is outside, which those experience uh, can have an impact of our changing our perspective. I am not saying that mentee should directly implement our experience to his life, not, definitely not, because he has his own life. He has different circumstances. Our experience are not repeatable. However, the outcome and learning from our experience can be used, of course. Absolutely, yes, correct.就是老师呢，他常常会就是会问学生，就是关于就是他们帮帮助师傅帮助学生解决他们常常可能不知道的问题，然后这是我们是作为导师是不是就是不应该这样做，然后我们导师呢是应该就是主要是比如说通过提问
partners. So we must be supported because we have nobody around us that we can share because we have to keep it in confidence what is going on during the process. Uh, I see, can you translate? Yes, because as I will say. Yeah. 就是我们在导师辅导过程当中就是重要的 and therefore, we need to be supported by three kind of things. First, it's face-to-face -face supervision with some master or colleague who is also professional or psychologist. But the best, the therapist who is working, not only who finished psychology, it must be professional supervision, yes? That we can share our own thoughts and, uh, and feelings and uh, questions and everything. The second tool is the intervision among the friends, among the other uh, mentors. You can organize the group that they, we can sub, you can support each other during the intervision session and I advise you to do, if you are working and you have mentees and you're working every, uh, every month. I've got supervision personal every month and it's really supportive. The third is continuous education. Be on webinars, read the books, ask the questions around yourself. Be in the in the in the meetings, in the congress, um, ask people around. This continuous education is really also important and supportive. So those three um, tools I, I really advise you to this is and uh, this is the, 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 the path of self-development and the path of self-awareness. Also, of course, there is a additional trainings, and I deeply advise you to go into the training of inter, uh, um, emotional intelligence, the EQ. Um, there are the several, um, the good one, um, I know in the States and Europe, uh, definitely uh, the, the very good trainings and courses of Talent Smart. One is the Talent Smart, and the second is positive psychology. Um, if you like, I can write you down, but I don't want to promote anybody. <laughs> one is American and one is um, European. So uh, I don't know for sure if it's the place to write it down or not. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. No problem. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you translate? I see why I, am, I yeah. will be writing. So, 我们这督导可以是大师级的进行一次活动
一些问自己一些问题，然后多参加一些会议，然后可以跟周围的人多交流。然后另外呢，其实大家也可以接受一些就跟情商有关的一些培训，然后还有就是在聊天框中的那个向大家推荐的比较比较好的关于一级心理学的，然后关于关于人才方面的一些课程。大家可以参考一下。Also, I can write you down、uh, the book,、uh, two books that I advise you to read about emotional intelligence, both written by Daniel Goleman, 